it's now up to our next speaker. Takada Tomoko from Japan. She's going to talk about learner autonomy in the Japanese national curriculum.
function of ELP, especially its pedagogical function, are not well known to teachers and educators. In fact, the existence of ELP itself is unfamiliar to the majority of language teachers. In Europe, so far and ELP were simultaneously developed, but in Japan, the development of descriptors proceeded. The completion of the Sefer J coincided with the implementation of the revised national curricula at secondary schools which emphasized the use of target language in the classroom. In order to fully implement the revised curricula, the Ministry of Education issued a report with five proposals, which I mentioned before. And the proposal demands that teachers should leave behind the teacher-centered knowledge transmission model and have their students participate in language activities such as speeches, presentations, discussions, and debates. The report further suggests that if learning attainment targets are set in the form of candle lists, teachers will have their students do the language activities stated in the descriptors, and that way students will use the language for the purpose of communication instead of just listening to lectures on grammar and doing mechanical drills. In other words, the Sefer J is expected to contribute to the change of teaching methods, but the development of learner autonomy has been receiving less attention. However, learner autonomy does have a legitimate place in the Japanese national curriculum. Basic Act on Education, which was revised in 2006, stipulates that education should be carried out to achieve five objectives. One of them is to foster a spirit of autonomy and independence. School Education Act is another law that emphasizes learner autonomy. Article 30 specifies that a basis for lifelong learning should be established by helping students acquire basic knowledge and skills, develop abilities to use them to solve problems, as well as abilities to think, judge, and express themselves, and foster positive attitude toward learning. Based on Basic Act on Education and School Education Act, Curriculum guidelines are drafted, which are called courses of study. A positive attitude toward learning is echoed as a fundamental principle. It is termed as zest for living. It's a wide-ranging concept that includes abilities to find and solve problems, abilities to learn, think, judge, and act with initiative, self-control, interdependence, sensitivity to others, well-rounded character, and physical well-being. All these qualities are called zestful living as an, as an umbrella term. And zestful living is required of capable members of rapidly changing, globalized society, according to the Ministry of Education. And this principle permeates through the courses of study of all the academic subjects. And zestful living has a substantial overlap with the key competencies in three broad categories defined by OECD in 2003. Use tools interactively, interact in heterogeneous groups, and act autonomously. For example, acting autonomously entails some constructs of zest for living, such as abilities to find and solve problems, and to think, judge, and act with initiative, as the national curriculum states. This overlap is no coincidence because the courses of a study were revised inspired by the key competencies of OECD.
Now, uh, where is zestful living place in the courses of study for foreign language? Unfortunately, it keeps relatively a low profile. Well, this diagram shows the English language education system in Japan. The exposure to English starts in the fifth grade. The name of the subject is foreign language activities, but practically most schools choose English. Well, this subject is very unique in that it does not aim at language acquisition. Its objective is to familiarize pupils to English sounds and basic expressions. Now, please look at the the objectives of foreign language offered in primary, lower secondary, and upper secondary schools. Out of three overall objectives, two of them are shared at primary and secondary schools. That's um, two and three. To deepen understanding of language and culture, and to foster a positive attitude toward communication. The other objective of upper secondary school is to develop students' abilities and lower secondary schools aim at developing their basic communicative abilities. Now, as you can see, learner autonomy is not explicitly stated in the overall object objectives of the courses, courses of study for foreign language. In the last section of the courses of study, however, we can get a glimpse of learner autonomy. And that section is called Lesson Plan Design and Treatment of the Contents. At lower secondary schools, it encourages the use of ICT and dictionaries, along with peer work and group work. The courses of study, the course of study for upper secondary schools mentions positive attitude to learning English for themselves and lifelong learning. Pair work, group work, and the use of ICT are again stated. However, reflection and self-assessment, which are core of the development of autonomy, are not included. To some, Learner autonomy is one of the educational objectives specified in Basic Act on Education and School Education Act. But how to foster learner autonomy is not clearly stated in the courses of study of foreign language, except some teaching techniques. It seems that learner autonomy is treated as educational ideal rather than an objective to achieve. So, is there hope for the promotion of learner autonomy in Japan? Yes, I believe so. More teachers have become interested in learner autonomy. It is not uncommon at a conference to find presentations on reflective learning using portfolios and project activities in which students learn English through using the language. The cross-curricular program called Integrated Study Period may provide insight into the development of autonomy in language learning. It is a program that inaugurated in primary and secondary schools in 2000 to foster zestful living. Each school chooses from a wide range of themes such as international understanding, environmental issues, health and welfare, and engages students in hands-on activities. The outcome of integrated study period varies from school to school, but some teachers got positive results, and so their experience may serve as a driving force for similar activities in foreign language. Textbooks can also add impetus to the promotion of learner autonomy the new versions of textbooks based on the reversed courses of study show some innovative attempts to help students to be responsible for their own learning. For example, a series of textbooks for lower secondary schools have a road map 
after the table of contents, which shows three objective, three project activities for each grade. The aim of each activity is shown so that students can see what they will be able to do in English by the end of the year. In addition, most projects include planning and reflection sections. And this is the list of the project activities. Just by adding I can at the beginning of each, sen each sentence, this list can be made into a can-do list. And some activities provide a reflection section at the end like this. This is a new aspect added to some authorized textbooks and the revised courses of study. With this, learner autonomy has become gradually visible in English language education in Japan, but of course we face some challenges. First, learner autonomy is a relative leading concept, which does not seem to fit in Japanese teachers' traditional beliefs and assumptions of language learning. Although things have been changing, the majority of teachers are still more comfortable with teacher-centered knowledge transmission model of language teaching. It is natural that they will feel anxiety and tension as they get rid of their habitual practice. Second, lack of time is a persistent problem. As my colleagues and I approach some secondary school teachers searching for research science, we find that some teachers are overwhelmed by materials that should be covered in a limited amount of time. They wonder if they could set aside some time for reflection. And third, the main interest of students and parents, especially at secondary, upper secondary schools, is to succeed in the entrance examinations, and many English exams take discrete point approach and are not compatible with autonomous learning. How should we tackle these problems? First, we must reinforce the behavioral orientation of the CFR among teachers. Teachers are aware that students develop their communicative proficiency by using a language for communication, but teachers themselves are the products of grammar translation method. The use of candle lists, which the Ministry of Education suggested last year, can be one solution. And it has been put into practice under the leadership of prefectural education of both this year. And second, the concept of learner autonomy should be shared with teachers. Well, they are pressured to cover the content of the textbooks authorized by the Ministry of Education. But as Dr. Leto says in one of his books, the explicit treatment of features of the target language system cannot replace the language acquisition process, although it can support it. And we should disseminate this idea. And third, reflective learning should be incorporated but realistically speaking, it will take time to realize it on the national level. And that's why I'm here. I also need support. <laughs> so this is the overview of learner autonomy in Japanese national curriculum. Thank you very much.